Hold up, Grandma. Hey, guys. Oh, my God. My eyes burn. My eyes burn. Hi. Hi. It's working. I know, finally. I was like, hello, and I was like, bro, I was not working. I don't know. Well, thank you so much for doing this. No, thank you. I'm very happy to. My computer is... Yeah, I mean, I just, um, I asked Twitter if I, if they suggested anyone to me who would benefit from using my platform to speak about what's happening in the world right now. And um, your name was one of the first accounts that I was suggested. So I figured, Aww. let's do it. And I just want to let you have this time to speak and whatever you want to say. You have thousands of people who are willing to listen. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, first and foremost, I just want to say, like, the unity that's happening right now is unbelievable. I've honestly never seen anything like this. I know it's, like, been protests, like, with the Mike Brown. That's when I first started when I was 13 years old. And I will talk about that. But um, I've seen a lot of unity. A lot of unity. Like, literally, um, I'm not saying that I haven't seen it before, but it's something I haven't seen. It's, some, it's so different this time. And, like, it's something about George Floyd's murder that, like, haunts me. It, like, gets to me. Like, I don't know. It's something about his murder that, like, strikes something in me that's, like, I can't, I can't explain it. I can't explain it. Something I can't really, um, touch, like, put a finger on. But it's what something you, that... It was about his murder that kind of was the tipping point. Like, do you yeah. think... Yeah. Was it... Do you... What was it about? The fact that... The fact that people, like... I'm not saying, okay, so, you know, it's always the cop's words against the black people. Like, you know, so it's it's good to have proof. But at the same time, I saw him, when I watched that video, my heart crushed. I straight bawled, like, just crying. Um, Because I thought about my brothers. I have black brothers. And, like, you know, just the thought of them being on the ground like that and all. And then people just standing around recording and, um, and not saying that, I'm not saying that, because I know it's always the police words against the black persons where I already know that. But it's like, at the same time, it's like, it comes a point in time where you see a human being as a human being. And like, I, that's how I saw George Floyd. If I was there, I don't care. Forget getting mace, forget getting tased. I'm going to stand up for what I believe in. He's a human being, you know, before anything goes. Before he's a black man to me, I know he's a black man, it's apparent, he's colored. But before anything, he's a human being that was asking to live. He was begging for his life. He was calling out to his dead mom, you know, his his deceased mom. I'm sorry, um, but I don't know. That it just touched it just touched my heart, and it, oh God, I don't know. It's pull, it pulls on my heartstrings, and I do everything that I can to fight. And um, I want to go back to like when I first started. Um, I was 13 years old. I Mike Brown went. That's when Mike Brown like um was murdered, and I remember like listening to music. I was like listening to the radio or something, and then that's when I heard, oh um um it was like a black man in the street or something like that. It was just telling him that it was like a, he was at land in the street. He was, he was in the street for four and a half hours. Like, this is horrible, you know? So I, I listened to the radio and everything like, uh, they was just telling like his body and description of him and all of that. And it was just like, what, what? And I was like, I thought, instantly I thought of my brother, I was only 13, but like, I was like, this is not right. Four and a half hours. This man was laying in the street like that. And then the fact that we saw his body, like, I don't even know. I think that traumatized me more than anything because it was in my neighborhood. It was in my community. So it's like, bro, I, I just can't. And then when I thought, when I thought about it, um, I thought about like, I was 13. And I was like, nobody's gonna listen to me. I thought about it. But I was like, this is something I feel so passionately for and like about. And this is something I'm like, uh, passionate to talk about because this is not okay for like, black men to keep getting killed like this. And then, you know, they names in the, um, hashtags were in front of their names time after time again and um when I first discovered that I was like when I was 13 when I first came to realization like this is a problem I was 13 I didn't know everything there was to know right but I knew that enough to know like this is not right like four and a half hours no yeah yeah but, but like the thing is, how I started the activism, I was, like, did a sit-in at my school. I, like, asked the teachers and stuff, can we do, like, a peaceful sit-in at my school? And then I, um, 
and then I like led a, a protest or whatever. Like I joined the Black Lives Matter protest. Like that was out there, like tear gas, mace, and all of that, all that kind of stuff. It was like burnt, like it literally burnt my face and my nose, all of that. Like I just remember everything. For third, yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And like people people tell me people do like I know people say, Oh, she ain't have no business out there, but at the same time, you not me and it was mainly uh my white counterparts who said, Oh, she's like, Why are you doing it? All lives matter and all this and they used to argue with me on this and like they used to like try to make me um stray away from my message, but I never did. I never did because I stood up for what I believed in at all costs. I was like, if if that means losing everything so be it i mean i'd rather stand for something i'd rather live standing for something did not die standing for nothing you know so that's what that that that's just where i'm at honestly and i feel like i'm just at this uh thing where i like felt so much rage with uh george floyd's murder like i felt so much rage and i i uh, find myself just um just getting angry at everybody like i try not to and i know they didn't like do anything to me but i just i'm just i just was an angry like when i first when he first like was murdered or whatever just a few days ago, this was literally a few days ago where I was just like, really, uh, just stuck in my own head. And I'm like, I can't believe what I just saw. I have literally had a nightmare the night after. No, the night after, like the night of the, the day of us, the, the night of seeing it. I'm sorry. Um, and when I woke up, I was just so angry. I was like, I don't know. I don't, like, I knew I was angry, but I was like, I'm just tired of this. I'm yeah. really tired of this. Like, I see, I, I think of my black brothers and the fear that my um 15-year-old brother, like, express all the time. I think I'm going to get killed by the police someday. I think I will. Like, what? Like, how was that even going through his 15-year-old brain at that time? I just don't get it. I can't even comprehend it at this point. Like, I can't. So, just the fact that he thinks like that, I would want, and, and also, my nephew is, um, he'll be nine this year, eight or nine, and, um, just the, the fact that no, the fact that, like, they think about this kind of stuff as black young men here, and it's not surprising, but it, it, it also it also hurts me, like, to think, like, they think like this. And I'm sorry if I'm talking too fast, but, like, I'm just normally like that. <laughs> um, but it norm like, it just, it just gets to me the most because the fact that they, you know, feel like, man, just for surviving, I'm just a bad person. I'm just a bad person for surviving. And that's not even the case. Like, Black is beautiful. We are we are valuable. Like we are meant to be here. We we belong here. Just like you, just like our white counterparts. We are just equal as you, but you don't see it though. You yeah. judge us off our skin color. Yeah. And, and and you you judge us and say that our skin is deemed bad, but it's not because it comes from years of of what you and your ancestors have done to our people. You know? Like what your I mean, what your ancestors have done to our people for 400 year uh, plus years. Like this is where it comes from, but I want to say, and I want to make that stance, like, we are not bad people. We right. are human just like you. We bleed the same. We cry just like you, like, all of it. And people just don't get that. Ultimately, it's just a skin color, and it's so silly. Like, when you think about it, it's just so silly that people, like, really uh, just just care about that, you know? Like, that's, that's all they care about. They don't care about your character and the kind of person you are. They just, oh, she's black. She's black. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to hate her because she's black. Like, what? How, you know how silly that sounds? You know, you need... You need some, you need some, um, an intervention with yourself, really. For like, sure. Like, seriously. Like, that, it's not normal to think that way. It's really not. And I, and somebody interesting, a, a psychologist, like, messaged me or whatever. She said, she said, uh, I want to get something. She said, I want to give your, get your advice as a black young woman living here in America. I want to get your advice. She's like, would you, would you label racism as a mental illness? And I was mm -hmm. like, that's an interesting question. But you know what? I don't know. Cause it's like, I got, I got different things about, I got different like opinions on that. And I want to express that. Like, okay. So yeah, it's something not right about that. It's something not, it, it, you can't be right in the head. You thinking like, Oh, just because this person is black or, you know, or not your color that you, um, that you feel the need to like be hateful and vow towards them, say some vow, like just mess up things to them. But also it's just like, it comes, I'm sorry. It comes to like a, um, It comes to like a, a point where you just like you literally have to take accountability you know because i know people try to like use barriers and say oh i've got a mental illness and stuff and like that and i'm not trying to take away from that but it's just like at the same time you have to take accountability you do really people, do. people actually blame their racism on a mental illness 
Yes, that's why I said that's kind of interesting. I'm glad you asked that question. I'm glad you posed that question, but it's like, bro, you gotta take accountability at some point. You can't I've keep. Never heard of that. That's right. Not... It's like, like the psychologist. She asked me like, like she DM me on Twitter and like asked me. She's like, well, I just want your opinion on this. Do you think like, because people have said this to her, like, do you think this uh, th do you think uh, this um, uh, this should be labeled as mental illness? And I'm just like, I don't know. That's an interesting question though, but I don't know. I can't give you a straight answer on that. I mean, I think race is taught. You don't, you're not born racist. Exactly. Whereas, you know, you can be born with a mental illness. I don't think that, I think blaming your own racism and your inability to want to change and learn and enlighten yourself. Right. It's a very, used to be like, I can't, I'm, this is just my mental illness. It's like, right. So many amazing posts lately and, and things that are like it's okay to acknowledge that the way you've been thinking is wrong and change it so i think there's so many people because of their age because of you know they're like oh i'm from a different time it was different back then it's like great well now it's 20 fucking 20 let's right. change it's such a poor excuse to be sitting there and blaming your racism on Yes, anyways, continue. I just No, I feel that. I feel that though. Um, <laughs> but the fact you you're right. You so right. And I want to piggyback off what you said. Like people, I've seen a lot of white people and my friends who grew up with racist parents like say, I I say no more. I'm not going to continue the cycle of ra racism and I'm not going to teach my I'm not going to teach this to my kids. I'm not going to continue this. I'm not going to let this be my generation where I continue the cycle of racism. Like this is going to end right here. So I've seen a lot of people that say that you don't have to be uh you don't have to be held um like you don't have to let your past bind you or like hold you you know a uh, hostage like you don't have to let that hold you hostage to like be a better person like you can always be a better person you can always change like you don't have to let oh you don't have to use excuse oh my family i grew up this way so this is how it's always been you can change it mm. you have the free right you have the free will to do it but you don't you choose not to do it yeah so that's not no excuse right and so what do you think, uh, I mean, I guess I would like to know uh, as, a, as a white woman, like what can I do or what behaviors have you seen in, in people who aren't colored? What actions can we take to just show that we're like fully in support of Black Lives Matter and that we can make a difference? I mean, I thought maybe just like lending my platform to anyone with a, you know, a voice is, it's the least I can do, like truly the least I can right. do. I'm so happy to do it. And I'm still messaging people and would love to do it for as many days and as many times as people want to talk. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, just kind of speak to me about like how we as a community who are not black can make the most, in, you know, what can we do as, I can't speak today, as a, as a the biggest impact we can have, what can we right, do? Right. No, I get what you say. I get I get what you're trying to say. Um, but I feel like something I want to touch base on what you just said, like what have you seen like people of I mean, none people of color like do, like none black people do. So I wanna say when I was at a protest, I kind of witnessed like uh they were it was like these white women, they were trying to speak for us. And I'm just like, bro, you can speak up, you can stand with us, but like don't speak for us as you as if you was in our like shoes. I hated that so much and it touched me. It like really uh touched a nerve in me. I was just like, no, you can't do that. Then the thing is, I saw a lot of, like, I get that you're trying to stand in solidarity, but please have some black people up there. When you're speaking, please, like that is so important. And when you're like, especially when you're speaking out about something that affects us so, so much daily, like, I just don't like that. And I, I get the, I get what they're trying to do. I get that. But it's just like, it, it comes a point where you just like have to say, you got to step back a little bit, but you also have to stand with us. Like, it's like, it's that thin line between like, you really have to like, be cautious and mindful of like what you do and what you say, uh, why you standing with us and like all of that. But like, I don't think people are aware of that, honestly. Um, but like I said, they was like standing on a stage thing up there with, uh, when we were at the protest. Luckily, I got to speak there, but I had to kind of ask for them to pass me the mic. You know, I'm just like, no, I don't like that. That's not, I shouldn't be asking for you to pass me the mic. That should be a given. Like, you're speaking about Black Lives Matter and I'm, I'm Black and this right. is something that affects me, right? Like, 
but I shouldn't be having to ask him. Can I get the mic? Can I speak now? Like what? But that's something I didn't really like. But as far as that, everything goes. It was a peaceful protest, and every protest I've been to recently, I've been days and days at pro different protests, and some I filmed, some I didn't film. I just wanted to be in the moment. Um, uh, but yeah, just what? that protest recently, huh? Where are you, like in the states? Oh, I'm in Missouri. Okay, okay. So you're going to the protest in Missouri? Yeah, I've been I've been to the protest every single day. Like, yeah. Okay. And, and stuff for today because I've I've been doing a lot of other stuff, but like a lot of different interviews and stuff, and like just uh reaching out and all of that. And I also been like donating to like uh uh like helping people get masks and different protection and stuff. Like the donations that I got, I've like just got to them because I don't really. I don't know. I just feel like the need to give it to people. So that really needs it. Um, but the thing is, what I was saying was, um, I did like the fact that people were like, you know, just standing with us and stuff. I liked that. I really like what they were doing. Mm. But the only thing was, that's the only thing that touched me the wrong way. They like rubbed me the wrong way. I was like, bro, don't, don't do that. Don't do that, please. That's something that you don't do. And, and then the thing is when I, when I, um, when I spoke up, this this other black girl, she said, yeah, I feel the same way, but I didn't want to say nothing. Like, the fact that you feel like you have to be silent as a black, as a black woman, it's, it's unacceptable. It's not, it's not, it's sad. So she said, she said, uh, because I feel like if I wouldn't have said nothing to her or, like, just spoke up about it, I spoke up about it. I'm very vocal. I'm unfiltered. Like, I will speak my mind at any given moment. And that's what people don't like about me. That's the same reason people love me and that's the same re reason people hate me. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So I damned if I do, I damned if I'm, I don't. So, uh, but when I spoke up and I, t and, and I, and I was vocal about it, she said, oh, I feel the same way too. So just imagine how many other black people felt the same way in that, in, at that protest. But um, what I would say, keep doing, is I love the fact that you are lending your platform to uh, people of color and black activists or whoever, like, however you, like, uh, call, whatever you call us. Um, but I feel like, um also uh even if you can't donate or whatever like not you personally but i'm just saying like if, if anybody on here likes uh just wonder how they can help i feel like uh just literally amplifying the black voices uh don't okay one thing i want to say i'm sorry i'm like going to different trains of thoughts but one thing i want to say um is the fact that people are using the black images with the black lives matter um hashtag please don't do that because i get what you're trying to do you're trying to mute yourself, right? You're trying to stand in solidarity and blackout. And I get that. But what you're doing essentially is muting the black voices because all we see is the black images sure. with the hashtag. So you're trying to mute yourself for us, but you're muting us and you're hurting the black voices. And I get that it's no harm intended, but it's like, essentially that's what you're doing. And um, I'm, I'm telling people- Amplify that, black, yeah. not draw attention to the activism of posting a black picture exactly so i don't get I, honestly uh people like everybody else can freaking hammer me about this but i don't get the point of a black image at this point i don't know because a black image won't save us from the injustices that we face every day it won't be there you know it won't be there to protect us so i don't get the the effect of a it's like that false hope or the the activism that they trying to you know pretend that they're doing i don't know but i get i get the thing and people are having good intentions there's a lot of people out there with good intentions but it's just like i don't know you have to do more than that you know if you're amplifying black voices if you're supporting black businesses even if you can't donate just uh just literally sharing it if, if you can't donate like it's okay like just share amplify it share it with as many people as you can like as many white allies or your people all of the people that you know support like black lives and black lives matter all of that like i think that is so important i believe that is so important to do like people say oh i can't donate i can't donate but that's not the only thing that, that that's there it's a lot you can do you know uh look into these uh also educate yourself like look into these um these bail funds look into these um look into like the black the black people who have been doing this for years yeah. like myself people didn't know i have been doing this for th like since i was 13 almost seven years i'll be 20 this year like people didn't know that but I had to like tell them I'm here, you know, I'm here. Like I've been doing this and I don't mean to like take away from the message, you know, but it's like at this point when y'all talking about Black Lives Matter and y'all want to stand up for Black Lives, I feel like it's so important with the um, non-white people with the bigger platforms to like you uh, literally use their platform just to like uplift those people who've been here doing this groundwork, you know, because I feel like our voices have been like muffled in between like, you know, in between time uh, you know, with everything that's been happening, I feel like people are so wretched. Oh my God, the 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 white allies are standing up for us and all that. That is so great. That is so great. But it's like, 
don't forget the people not just myself i'm not this is not even about me just about me but i'm saying all the black people who have been literally black activists who have been literally shed have been bleeding out there tear gas bullets uh, rubber bullets all of that you know uh blood sweat and tears just every single day for years yep. i don't hear about these people all the time i mean people haven't even heard about me until like i posted on twitter and like i'm kenidra i've d been doing this since i was 13 like i'm here you know like i'm here i'm, I'm i'll am i be doing this and uh i feel like i deserve to have my voice and li my voice listened to you know and i we all deserve to be heard. Like I said, it's not just about me. I feel like we all deserve to be heard. We all play a vital role in, in uh, coming together and creating change that we wish to see. Our white allies, Black people, all of us have to come together on a united front and accept um, peace and love and unity, not as a norm, but the accept, like, like, not at the, um, what was I trying to say? Not the, ex no, I saw, I'm sorry. Not at the, uh, not as the exception, but as the norm. Like, this is like, this is uh this is what we need to do. You know, this is what I'm sorry, I just kind of stuttered a little bit because I'm like thinking about other stuff and I'm kind of getting notifications as I'm doing it. But uh but what I'm saying is just like you know, it's just so important to um keep continue to uplift these voices and people just say, Oh, uh and then the thing is what I hate the most is like the white allies be like, Oh, I can't do no I can't do much. I can't do much, you know? But it's not you can do, you can do it, you know? It's a lot you can do. Just just, I don't think they understand just by simply posting, tagging a black activist who you really love or many black activists who you mm. say, oh, you should go follow them. You should go follow their message. You should go get some like knowledge from them or whatever. Just doing that. I mean, that's a big deal yeah, for yeah. us. Yeah. Especially feeling ignored and like we are whispering this conversation about us, you know, like, yeah, absolutely. It's incredibly important. I would love if you could send me more information of black activists that i would love to have just yeah absolutely i think it's, it's not just about me you know it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of black activists who have been doing this work not just me yeah a lot of black activists uh does sign positions up i just saw they come yes absolutely i will share I, I don't know i will uh i would definitely share a position with you lily and uh also like with my followers or whatever because brianna taylor we cannot forget about brianna taylor the police shot into the house 22 round yeah. like Fired 22 times. And yeah. there, but the last time I looked at the petition, it was like at 1 million something, and we have to get to 3 million. So okay. we, need to, we need to, like, we need to, like, get the, sign these petitions, you know? Like, this is, we need to get it to the uh, governor of Kentucky. Um, and, um, because it's important. We can't forget about Breonna Taylor. You know, at the same time, all these black people who have lost their lives, who have been brutalized by police and all of that, um, who have been victims victims of police brutality like we have to continue to stand up and we cannot like mute out one voice just to lift up another one you know we have to find that balance because it's kind of hard but we have to find that balance but yeah we can definitely we cannot forget about her absolutely we cannot so i just saw i got an email on that today because somebody was reaching out to me like can you uh can you uh amplify this and like put out uh put out this petition or whatever and i do the best i can i don't have the biggest platform and uh, but I do the best that I can with the people that I have, you know, so I really appreciate this, just this, you know, this, just this happening, because I do this from my heart. I don't do this for, like, uh, people coming to my page. I don't do that for followers. I don't never, I mean, when I had, like, 800 followers, I was still doing what I did, you know? Nobody yep. knew who I was. I still kept going hard. I still kept fighting for what I believe in. So it's not to be, it's not to be like, oh, I got this many followers. I got that, you know, it's never to do that. And I, ne and I always stay focused on the, the mission, why I came here, why I started this in the first place. Because when you get lost up in the freaking world of social media and <sighs> you just, you just lose the messages all up in the air. And it, it's just not, you know, it's meaningless after a while. So you have to really stay focused on the message and like what you really want to see change in the world you know because right now it's hard times in the world period yep. and we all need to stick together i'm sorry about going on my rant i know i'm kind of talking too much and going on my rant but you know <laughs> exactly what i wanted it's um it's so beautiful to hear you speak and i'm i'm so honored to let you do your thing on here and i would love no, to i'm super honored like you honored i'm really honored like i straight love you first of all I know I'm not trying to like, I really do. I really love you. That's why I was like, what? She DM me, huh? What? Um, but yeah, I, I really love you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful woman. And um, uh, 
talented very talented and just the fact that you reached out to me about that and um the fact that you use your privilege in a good way and just using your platform that it's empowering and it's inspiring i know people like oh you shouldn't thank the white create the white activists or whatever or uh non-white people for doing the bare minimum you know sometimes we have to say we appreciate each other you know it's okay to say it yeah sure but like i get that i get that side of it but they like you should thank you know people some people say that but it's like it's a lot of people that say thank you you know because we all need to like it's no i feel like that that's that only creates a divide you know when like oh you shouldn't be doing it you shouldn't be like Bro, you can thank people. It's okay to do that. It's okay. Like, you can say, oh, you, I appreciate you. I love you. Like, it's okay to do that. That's what we want to do. We want. We don't want to have unity. Yeah. So that's what I strive to do. I don't, I don't have no hate in my heart for nobody. I, I just like people. I just like things in the world. But do I hate people? No. Can they, do, can they be better people? Absolutely. Yeah. But, and I hope they get, I hope they, you know, do work with themselves, especially the racists who, uh, who, and I, I do get death threats. I do. Like, and I heard, it, I want to say, also, I want to mention something. Um, at a protest that I was at, I mean, I risk my life every single day. God, I do. But I was at a protest here in Missouri. And I don't want to say what, what city I'm in. I don't want to say that because I don't feel comfortable saying it. But um, this boy came up with a Confederate flag shirt on, right? He came up, he recorded me. Mm-hmm. So somebody texted me that, that day and said, did you know people are coming with Confederate flags to black activists and they're recording them and then they aim to kill them later. And I said, what? It's like, you have to be careful out here, Kenesha. You really have to be careful out here. And I don't know. It's not confirmed. I don't know how true that is. But they seem like it's all uh, that they, they are coming to. And that's it's like, bro, this kind of makes sense. I'm just like, why is he recording me? You know, why is he recording me? He don't know me. I don't know him. And yet, he literally came up to me. And people were like, literally hammering this boy. Like, get get out of here. You know, why are you coming to this girl? Like, she all she's trying to do is stand up and what uh, for what she believe in and all of that. And he came up to me just bothering me just harassing me like and people saying oh why you react this way and the thing that i hate the most and when they tell like me as a black young woman how to react to something like that some hate like that you know don't tell me how to react to that he came up to me harassing me with a confederate flag shirt on what do you expect me to do yeah what do you expect me to say do you expect me to hold my calm am i cool for sure then, and then you say i feed into this angry black woman narrative okay then if i do so be it like so be it i am a human being if, before anything else you know i can't and sometimes you expect us to keep our mouth shut and not say anything and all that like forget that we we are human beings like we can we can speak out we can say what we want to say you know and and no it's not about let, being weak or letting them get to us it's just like bro before anything we are not ragdolls we're not tools we are out here doing the work we're putting in work every day for our lives, for our br- black brothers and sisters who have been brutalized, who have been murdered by the police, by the racist officers who should not even be in freaking um in that position of power. So the fact that people want to threaten, say, oh, you should go kill yourself. You don't belong here. Call me apes. Call me monkeys. All of that. I mean, I've heard it all. So at this point, it's just like, <laughs> come up with something new. Come up with something new. You know? I mean, you want a cookie, just come up with something new. I promise I'll give you a cookie if you come up with something new. Like, it's just, it's getting old to me. But it's like, does it make any less hurtful? No. But at the same time, it's like, you have to be, the what I want to end off with is like, um, no matter what, y'all, everybody who's listening right now, no matter what, like, it's, it's, it don't, like, it's not a bad thing to be kind. It really is not. Like, I don't get why it's so hard to be kind. It is so it is so easy for people to be angry and people to be hateful, people to be mean to each other. But why not be kind? I mean, this is not what I say. This is the world that I want for my nephews right now and future generations to come. Oh, no, absolutely not. But do, am I working towards change? Do I want to uh, work towards change and continue to work towards change when my white ally, like the white allies who are standing up in solidarity with us, who are speaking up with us, all of that, who are standing up, speaking out, exposing racism and its tracks, all of that, like, Am I, do I want to work towards that? Yes. And do I want to work towards a better world? Absolutely. But as far as to just hating each other for no reason because of skin color, ultimately, like, that is so silly. I just don't get the, I just can't comprehend it. But, you know, it's just, I, I just don't know. I just feel like it's, 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 it's so, it's so important to be kind, especially today, especially today, in this world today. It is troubling times, dark times for everybody with the COVID-19 that was happening that I feel like it's going to be spiking cases probably because it's a lot of protests. So we need to, we need to practice kindness, y'all. Like, I just feel like 
And it, so it does if if y'all don't hear nothing else, if y'all didn't hear nothing else I said, please let kindness be our beacon. Leave with kindness. Like it does not steer you the wrong way if you leave with kindness. Because after my my godmother passed away seven months ago, that's all she taught that's what she taught me. And that's something I really that really stuck with me, that really resonated with me. No matter what people do to you, don't wrong them the way they wronged you. Yeah. Be be um be kind to them. Even when they wronged you, and that, I know that's so hard as human beings because we are conditional people. We are conditional people. We love on condition. You know, some people say, I love you unconditional. I do this, I do that, but we love on condition. And and, and that's true. That's just facts, you know? Um, and I don't know what you believe in, but the what I believe in, um, the God I pray to, he's unconditional. He loves unconditionally. So people, us as men, men and brothers and sisters or whatever you call it, um, we, we love condition and, and, and that's just like, I don't know, it's, it's kind of sad, but it's like, you know, that's just what, that's what, just is where we at now. And, um, but yeah, that's what I want to leave off with and just be kind and, you know, uh, help, help anybody in need. If you see, if you see your, uh, if you see like black people who are being, um, like, uh, targeted with racism or hate or whatever, call it out. Don't stand there and like, watch it. Because you are complicit, like you are a part of the problem. If you stay and you stay and you stand around and be like, "Oh, this not this not my problem," but you yeah. saw it, it is your problem at this point. You know, you saw it and you're standing there and you're not doing anything. It comes a point in time where you have to see a human being to a human being. You have to. It's not. I'm not saying don't pay attention, don't see it for skin color because we are who we are. You know. But I'm saying like as a human being to a human being. When I saw. George Floyd on that ground, I saw him as a human being. I didn't see him as just a black man, you know? Saw him as a human being, like at one like one of my loved ones or some one of my brothers th that could be on that ground, easily be on that ground. So that's why I was so angry. That's why I stood, that's why I'm standing up the way that I do. Because, you know, it's, it's so important, y'all. It's so important. But I really thank you, Lily, for, you know, for your platform, for just giving me that voice, because I needed to get that out, because I feel like, I don't have the biggest platform, like I said, but you know, I feel like my voice is important. So, you, your voice is incredibly important. I'm so honored that you were able to talk with me and that you were available. I'm sure you're. Everyone's wanting to talk to you right now. Um, I just wanted your voice to be heard as well and do the small. This is the you know this is the the least I can do. And so, send me the petition um, that I can share for people to sign and. Um, send me other advocates that I can reach out to, but Absolutely. thank you so much. You are so fucking brave and you're risking your life every day to fight for what you believe in. And that's the most honorable thing a human being can do. So God bless you. Truly. You are fucking amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You have, you have a, a what's, what time is it there? Like, is it night or 7 20 PM? Yeah, you have, I, I hope you have a great night and, um, continue spreading love and kindness and please just continue to you know uh be there and do what you keep, keep doing what you're doing because it's, it's amazing like never doubt that for a second like what you're doing is amazing the fact that you gave me this platform is so amazing so and other you know and I, I would definitely send other um black advocates and activists to you and everything that I feel like I recommend and all of that you know it's important so um like I said thank you so much and I hope you have a great rest of your night and uh be well and be kind and you know that's for the people that's on here be kind be well y'all um, i love y'all uh be be cool be safe bye bye <sighs> okay guys i thank y'all for joining i'm gonna get off of here but um it was so amazing thank you guys for hearing me out um i really appreciate that um so i'm gonna save this live so yeah y'all can definitely watch it again <laughs>